OK, I reckon the world is looking on in horror at what this country has turned into. COVID madness has gripped so many people, and especially our political leaders, as I just pointed out. But one of them who's been on the receiving end of this madness is actually South Australian Senator Alex Antic. Now, he recently appeared on Fox News, this time to discuss his time in a COVID quarantine camp known as a Medi Hotel, despite not having COVID. Senator Antic joins me now. Senator, thanks so much for your time. Happy New Year. Now, America seems fascinated with your experience, uh, both the imprisonment or the in internment uh, in the Medi gulags, as I like to refer to them, but also you made some statements recently about a social credit system which has certainly captured the attention of the American media and now here in Australia. Tell us what you mean. Well, thanks, Corinne. Happy New Year to you as well. Look, the, um, there's a couple of points to be made there. And the, the first one is this fascination that the United States and other part of the, parts of the world have with what's going on in Australia. And, of course, we've had our COVID response and, you know, we have had a good run, thankfully, in terms of deaths. Uh, and, uh, and that's been a good thing. But, of course... The flip side to that is what we've lost in the process. And my fear is that we have lost and may continually lose a whole lot of our freedoms and liberties uh, that we must get back, that we must retrieve from unelected bureaucrats that have been pushing some of this stuff. Um, now, one of them is, uh, as discussed on that show on Tucker Carlson's show, which uh, was this, this home quarantine style app that uh, is in use apparently here in South Australia. Uh, the idea of it was that you were effectively buying your freedom back from home quarantine, or sorry, from medi-hotel medi quarantine, um, by s s giving yourself over to this fairly draconian style software, which goes on your phone, it takes your uh, biometric facial data and it cross-references that with the GPS locations to make sure you're at home when you say you should be. Remember, we used to trust Australians to do the right thing, but now the bureaucrats tell us that we have to have this cross triangulation of your position using this app. It's quite intriguing because in a sense, this is actually more strict than potentially you would get from a criminal who's got a home detention bracelet. Uh, and people are saying they're not worried about this. Well, I'm entirely worried about this. I'm entirely worried about the creep uh, and what this means in terms of the future. You know, how far away are we before we are accepting things like uh, apps determining what you buy from the shops? You know, do we have a climate lockdown where you can only you know, pick up certain amount of groceries per week. Now, this might sound uh, all a bit off board, but is it? I mean, we've seen a big slip in well, two years and I'm very worried about it. You should be, Senator, because we've all been conditioned to accept so many things that otherwise we wouldn't do. So we have to ask what's next. Senator, though, I want to ask you about this. There's a scandal today and it started um, with Dr Fauci, actually, in America, where he t built the cat on... Uh, false um, false hospitalizations of children in particular. But Brad Hazard's confirmed that the Prime Minister wants a better definition of what a COVID hospitalization is. Isn't this a bit too little too late? We've been asking, and I know you have, about these figures for a very long time. They've either ignored it or they've massaged it and told us not to worry, everything's good. Why are these people being counted? Have we been conned? Well, I think one of the things that really comes out of this has been the lack of information that the community is being provided by our health bureaucracies. I mean, as you say, I've been asking for information from SA Health for months and months on end. In fact, my FOI requests are currently with the Ombudsman. Um, but also just medical evidence. We've seen prescriptive rules being applied by our health bureaucracies. 1.5 metres for this, masks for that, uh, you know, whatever the issue may be. So, you know, we are told to trust the science. We just won't, won't see the science. They won't show us the science. And it applies to these admissions as well. If people go to hospital with a broken leg but happen to have COVID, in my book, that's getting to admitted to hospital with a broken leg. Now, the same could be said for COVID deaths as well. And I think that's a really, really important point that's, that's, that's got to be picked up here as well. Um, if you are driving a car and you're tragically killed in a car accident but you've got COVID, who, what, what are they recording that as? Is that recorded as a car crash or is it recorded as a COVID death? One of the things we're seeing out of this period is, I think, a sad, sad um, dereliction of trust in our institutions, medical institutions, professional bodies uh, that are now are going to take time to rebuild because we must be provided with the information. It's time that there was pure transparency from these health bureaucracies um, and we need to know the facts. Well, you're exactly right there. And I can say that, um, I tell you with uh, factually, that in America, we've had people that have fallen off ladders, that have been in motorcycle accidents, that have been declared COVID deaths because they tested positive for COVID-19 28 days 
prior to actually dying. Is that happening here? We also know that in America, hospitals were receiving incentive payments and, and additional funding if they diagnosed that someone had COVID or, sorry, was experiencing a, a death through COVID. Is that happening here? We can't get these answers from any of the health bureaucrats. And if we can't, and you can't as a politician, what are we going to do to get to the bottom of this? Well, look, I think time is going to tell the full story here. But in the meantime, we've got um, health bureaucracies that are running the show in terms of uh, some of our poor hospitality businesses here in SA. Many of them are struggling through these restrictions. Um, I, I think it's time that the business leaders started asking this question as well. Certainly more politicians need to. We have seen, I think, um, a political class in this country that have largely waved this stuff through. That's across the board. Uh, it's time for political leaders, business leaders and everyone else to start asking these questions because ultimately politics is a numbers game. The more voices, the better.